Hello. The son of a poor widow struck it rich in the stock market and decided that he wanted to do something special for his mother. So he went to the pet store and asked the pet store owner, what's the rarest and most you know, special pet you have? The pet store owner said, well, I have a parrot. It's worth $50,000. It can recite the Ten Commandments and scripture passages and even the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I'll take it, said the young man. So he brought it home and then he uh, had it shipped to his mother. And the next day he called up his mother and said, did you get the bird? She said, sure did, son. Thank you. It was delicious. In the scriptures in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we read that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. When I saw that particular, that last one I mentioned, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, it uh, kind of struck me that we're in one of those times when we have to refrain from embracing. We have to refrain from touch, shaking hands, and things like that, that are very normal activities that uh, are part of being human. And uh, it makes it difficult. Um, this is a time of uh, challenge in many ways for us, for us as individuals and as a society. And that's one of the things that I miss about this time is being able to shake hands uh, of course, being present with people, even giving a hug to a friend or a loved one. Hopefully, in the months to come, we'll be able to embrace again. And I look forward to that time. We can laugh, and certainly at times we do mourn. But I hope also that you're able to laugh in these days. And um, while I refrain from offering advice uh, very often, uh, today I'd like to offer you five tips for living in a pandemic from Jasmine Smith. I heard this on Pioneer TV a few weeks ago and I wrote down her tips and I ran across it uh, yesterday and thought I'd share it today. Number one, she uh, suggests start with gratitude. Now, gratitude is an attitude that is a platitude, but nonetheless, it's still something that is important and meaningful, worthwhile. Um, gratitude is a good thing. Uh, I, I know that um, when I practice gratitude, life just seems a little bit better um, to count a blessing or two. Um, one of the blessings I'm grateful for is my apartment. Just having a place I can come to that's my own, uh, kind of a safe place and a place that I can um, relax and rest, cook, but also get some work done. Two, give yourself permission to not be perfect. Leave the dishes in the sink until later in the day or till tomorrow. It's okay to take a nap. It's okay to not get your whole list done today. Third, build a network, a virtual network for support and encouragement, or a phone network, if that works for you. I think it would be wonderful if within our congregation, um, we went a little bit beyond maybe our comfort level and called somebody up we haven't talked to for a few months. I have done that in the last few weeks, called different people and just said, hey, uh, how are you doing? That'd be wonderful if each of us maybe called one person a week that we haven't seen for a while, maybe even since the pandemic started, and offer some support and encouragement. It's good for yourself. It's good for the other person as well. Four, move. Uh, exercise, walk. Have a dance party at home, she suggested. Dance with your partner, your spouse, 
uh, your children. Um, I think exercise is vitally important. Keep moving. And fifth, keep the faith. Read the scriptures. Pray to our God, the God who loves us more than anyone possibly could. Um, find meaning in every day. Lean into God's grace. And sometimes, ideally, I think, um, finding a time every day to meet with God in prayer and to read a little bit of scripture and to meditate upon that scripture and then to lift up your prayer concerns to God uh, for others and for yourself and offering praise and thanksgiving. Uh, for me, morning and late evening are the time that I do that. And it really does make a difference. I'd like to wrap this up with a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Apostle Paul encourages us, as he did the Thessalonians, with these words. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. How do we do that? Well, there is, as it says in Ecclesiastes, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to weep and a time to rejoice. Um, maybe we can't rejoice always, but we can pray every day and we can give thanks in many different contexts. Um, even in a pandemic, there are things to be thankful for. Um, so that's what I have for today. Um, thinking of you, praying God's grace be with you. Let's pray. God of grace and goodness and glory, thank you for this new day. We thank you, Lord, for the rain. We thank you for sunshine. We thank you for your love that surpasses our understanding and for your peace and the joy of your Holy Spirit. We pray for one another, Lord. We pray for our leaders as they make important decisions. We pray that we would uh, consider how our actions affect others as well as ourselves. Pray that you would guide us today and in all the days ahead. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care.